another edition of Why Are You Awake? I'm Paul Farver, your host. If you're listening to this podcast, go over my YouTube page and watch it. We're good looking people. It's worth the watch. YouTube.com backslash Paul F. Comedy. This week we have comedian Max Walter. Very funny guy. Make sure you follow him as well. Uh, follow me on Instagram and follow my website to see the upcoming dates I have. Paul F. Comedy is my website. Paul F. Comedy dot com. Or you can follow me on Instagram. Paul Farvar, common spelling. It's right here. Also, check out our sponsor. Hey gang, as some of you know, I used to be a practicing lawyer in Chicago. I no longer practice, but from time to time, I need a lawyer. And when I need a lawyer, I call my friend Scott Shapiro. Scott Shapiro has been practicing law for over 25 years in Chicago. He does it all, from workers' compensation to personal injury, employment issues, and even entertainment law and contract needs. If you need a lawyer, Call my friend Scott, 312-648-8800. That's 312-648-8800. Or you can email him at scott at scottshapirolegal.com. Tell him I sent you. <sighs> Let me just get into my space. All right, I'm here. Welcome to Why Are You Awake? Paul Farver here, your host this week. We have the very funny comedian, Max Walter. Hey, Max. Hey, Paul. How are you? I'm great, Paul. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. A lot of people don't ask that question. Yeah, a lot of comedians aren't the most uh, socially adept. Do you consider yourself socially adept? I do. I, I think I, I think I know what's going on around me. Do you? Yeah, I think I got tabs on people, can read people. You're having a good time. Justin's having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like... Well, I mean, your persona on stage is obviously not aware, whereas <laughs> now you are. But uh, I didn't I didn't think you were this socially aware. Well, you probably don't think I'm very social because in the comedy scene, I'm not super social. No, I don't give a shit about that. stuff. Oh. I'm not either. No. My, yeah. My persona on stage is totally different from who I am in real life. So, Max, let's let's give background here. OK. Uh, I think we first worked together. I want to say it's Zanies, right? Do you remember how we met? I don't. Just in the comedy scene. I, I obviously know. knew who you were. We, I'm sure we did open mics, local shows together, but we've definitely done a lot of Zanies. Too. I remember we did Zanies and you were like trying to, I think you thought I owned the Laugh Factory. You're like, how do I get in there? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Just book the guy. And I did vouch for you, I think. And I think that ended up getting you one spot that's about it <laughs> i appreciate i appreciate the spot those spots are hard to come by so um but yeah i uh i remember i saw you i was like this is funny and i remember a couple places were booking comedians who are dark and dry is that I, you yeah, can I, yeah i don't think i'm always dark but i definitely have a lot of dark jokes so mm, okay i don't think you've got any happy what's the opposite of dark Light. Well, light. Yeah, I have a lot of jokes just, you know, about like chickens or walkie talkies. So I don't I don't qualify. Do they those die at the end? Do the chickens uh, die no, at the end of your Well, every chicken dies at the end, Paul. But <laughs> no, I mean the chickens and my chicken joke live on happily. Um I do I, I I realized tonight on stage, I was like, I have maybe one too many jokes about like dead children. Yes. You do I, have a lot. I that's think I got not cut enough. Off. But you have dark and I remember a comedy club was booking another dark comic who's really good, but they were booking him a lot. And I was like, this guy sounds a lot like Max. Okay. Why aren't you just booking the original? <laughs> and then they're like, yeah, that's right. Oh, <laughs> and, wow. I think, and I remember saying that, I think it was Laugh Factory, I remember, but wherever I was, I'm like, this is, this is just a... a an unpolished version of Max. Why wouldn't you just have hey, the thanks, polished Paul. version? Paul never told me until now he had this conversation. You know, he's I saving it did. for his podcast. When I thought I did tell you that. I thought we had that conversation at, uh, I do remember talking okay. to you about it. You just don't have any social awareness. <laughs> we were, we did a show together at like a condo thing. Oh, Tyler Ross. One of Tyler's yeah. shows. 
And uh, I think I told you, I was like, yeah, I saw this guy. He sounds oh. a lot like you. Well, maybe but after the podcast, you can tell me who. No, I'm not going to tell you <laughs> if you don't remember. <laughs> anyway, Max, so where, where, where are you from? Where, tell us where you, what's. I was born and raised in Bloomington, Indiana, which is where Indiana University is. Mm -hmm. I went to Indiana University, graduated in 2015 and moved up here right after pretty much to do comedy and wow, you're just a young lad i'm 31 what what did you study at did you graduate at yeah i studied i did a double major in english and linguistics and a, i minored in mandarin i speak a little of mandarin do you really yeah how do you say why are you awake in mandarin oh, okay i mean i'm not fluent uh so it'll be in the way some uh pool I'm trying to think of awake. I know sleep. So I would say, why, are, why aren't you asleep? Say that. Yeah. Is that easier? That's probably a little butchered, but I think we'll come the average that. Chinese speaker would get the meaning. Mandarin speaking. Yeah, you're, you're right, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> What's the other if, one? We're, not, we're nothing if we're not accurate here. <laughs> um, okay, so when you were in college, were you staying up late? And uh, or were you like... Oh, now we're getting to the theme. Well, we'll get to comedy, too. Yeah, I was... I mean, it was probably usually around in college, maybe midnight that I was going to bed. But of course... That's not late. No. I, but, you know, I have a wide range. And there, there were those times in college, like winter break when you're back home which for me was in the same town, just staying with my parents, <laughs> where I was, it was every night I was, it was staying up till 5.30 or so, just out with friends, just my biological clock was just in a totally different place. So what were you doing till 5.30 in the morning in Bloomington, Indiana? Are you allowed That's to say? That's a great say? question. Probably smoking weed and playing Super Smash Brothers Melee <laughs> and smoking a little more weed and then playing a little more melee <laughs> in Bloomington. I know it's not a super small town. I know, uh, John Mellencamp would disagree, but I feel like, uh, I, I feel like everything closes around ten, like nine there. Right. Was there things open past 10 in Bloomington that you can go to as a, even before college, like as a kid? Um, or college, high school kid. That's a good question. You know what? No, not really. We were mostly just in homes with our friends. Uh, past 10, if it's not a bar, yeah, you'd have to be going to like a late movie or something. Yeah. That's, yeah. So how, how would you survive if you were up past 10, like as a kid, just up late watching TV and playing Mario Sneaking Brothers? out at sleepovers, you know? But See, where would you sneak he'd out He'd walk too? around the neighborhood and go to a park and be like, isn't this awesome? <laughs> <laughs> we're outside at two. Instead of smoking inside, we're smoking outside. <laughs> well, that, and the sneaking out at sleepover days, I was not smoking weed yet. Yeah. So that was just kids walking around neighborhoods. Were you, were you an awkward kid in high school? Um, no, I don't think so. I, I, uh, I had what other people think so. Pro yeah, probably a few, a select few, but I think I was pretty generally well liked and uh, didn't have enemies. I wasn't like the pop one of the popular kids, but I don't even know how much of a real thing that is. But I, did you like? Did girls like you? You were into I, girls, yeah, or were you the guy? I think girls did like me, but I had such confidence issues yeah. that I didn't. Uh, I didn't, I don't want to say take advantage. That sounds wrong. I didn't even realize it a lot of the time. And the girls I did like, and I told I liked, I eventually got turned down. Yeah. So that, that hurt That's why I work comedians. even more. <laughs> That's every fucking origin story for a comedian. Probably. Um, so you get to college. Did you get out of your shell a little bit? Um, were you in a fraternity there? No, I was, uh, not in a fraternity. I had no interest. Um, yeah, I would say I got out of my, I got a little more confident. I think, um, I had acne that cleared up, you know, lost a little weight. So that all. Oh, were you a helped. fat kid in high school? No, but no, Chubby. no, <laughs> but, uh, I definitely put on, I had some chub. Yeah. Um, did you but, play sports in anything? Not for my high school, but I always played a lot of like recreational basketball and football with friends. And then I did a uh, bicycle trips with this group from my hometown over the summer. Little Indy. No, not even, not races, like cross country trips, like oh. three week long trips. So were you doing comedy in Bloomington? Yeah. I, in college, I, I knew I could make people laugh in a performance from a pretty early age. I did theater in high school, had oh. you know, the comedic roles usually. So you were popular with the theater. Kids. I wasn't a theater. Please don't uh, you can just, we edit this out. No. I was not a theater kid. I, I did theater. I was not a theater. So kid. you would do theater with theater people but then as soon as they said cut you would leave and you would not 
so, so socialize yeah, with I'd, any theater well, I'd people. go hang with like the grips you know and like the, 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 the grips are the people Paul wouldn't know the he's grips. the talent the grips are the people who move <laughs> the set pieces I was an that. athlete uh, oh, I didn't hang sure, out with you Paul, nerds yeah. <laughs> so were you Bowling so you'd hang out with <laughs> you hang, you'd hang out with the grips which are also <laughs> in the theater yeah I, I'm you're a theater kid <sighs> but you weren't doing show tunes you were just like Let's no, go watch actually, Star Wars for the twentieth time. I, they like flew some guy in. We did Thoroughly Modern Millie one year, and they flew some guy I in. Know what that is some musical, yeah. Um, and they flew some guy in to teach us the choreography. And I was so bad at the choreography that he singled me out once and made it clear that if I didn't improve, I would be kicked out. I, I, my dancing was terrible. But you were a good singer. No, no. I so just, why were you there? <laughs> I had, and Thoroughly Modern Millie had one line. I was George Gershwin. And I brought the house down with my one line. But What was the line? Um, someone asked how, like, my newest Rhapsody or whatever was coming along. And I said, it isn't. I'm stuck. Frozen. Blocked. And that was it. And and I, I spiced it up. I gave it a little more pizzazz. You were dressed up as Gershwin. Too, yeah, probably. makeup at the piano. How big was this high school? Was everyone in theater? Was no. it like one of those it was, things? It's like an 1800 person oh, okay. high school. Yeah. So, okay. So you didn't hang out with the theater kids. You hung out with the grips, which is <laughs> theater adjacent. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't hang out with one part, like select group of people. I just had my friends and they were my friends, you know, but I okay. feel like but I they were all grips. <laughs> yeah. They, they were all just lowly grips. No, no. Actually, my future wife was a grip though. Wait, your future wife went to high school with you. I met her in middle school. Oh, well, we wow. didn't start dating until after college. Oh, wow. We were very fast friends. Everyone said we should date for years and years. We never did. It was always platonic. We even lived together two years of college with other people and then after college i moved here she moved to tennessee and we'd always still see each other and group activities hanging out going visiting her she visits here we had a big group of friends we'd do things together and it just hit me one day oh i i love this person as more than a friend huh. so i came clean to her started dating long distance then she moved to chicago and now we're married was she uh was she in that theater of millie thing was she in that? Yeah, she was in Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly. Modern, <laughs> the Theater of Millie. What is it called? Thoroughly Modern Millie. The, thoroughly Modern Millie. What was her, do you remember what her line was? She was a grip. <laughs> she didn't ha She didn't get a line. She moved my set pieces well, maybe, for me. Do you think, did she go back and say, that was the moment I knew that this was when you did your Gershwin <laughs> line? Was she like, that's the guy I'm going to marry? <laughs> you no. know, she had on and off crushes on me, she said, so... Uh, Maybe at that point you she and did. Bob, who did the other line, that was really good. The <laughs> other Bob, sucked. I don't know. Was. <laughs> okay, so we in you knew you can you knew you were funny. That was the moment. Yeah, you knew. and then I, I started doing like stand up, and I did in college, and I was in a sketch group all throughout college. So that was when I really started getting like more serious about it. What about stand up though? Yeah, I, I'm in Bloomington. They have the Comedy Attic. Oh yeah. Honestly, my favorite club sort of nearby is Go Bananas in Cincinnati. Oh yeah, I love. That I club. used to do their summer tournaments, and the crowds were always just great. It's such a fun club. It was really fun. Haven't really been there since, but. Um, okay, so you're doing sketch comedy in Bloomington. Mm -hmm. You come to Chicago. Are you doing sketch comedy here too? Um, my friends who moved up here as well, a few of them were also in the sketch group. So we, we tried filming some stuff. We had fun with it, but we just didn't really know what to do with it once we... that Those were back in the days where Facebook was like everything, you know? So we were just... I guess we should just put them on Facebook and... Sketches, you, know, you mean? Yeah, yeah. A few sketches. And some were I thought were really funny, but we never got like a lot of views or traction. You know, we were doing Facebook and YouTube. Honestly, real Instagram Reels is, would probably be a much better yeah. outlet for it. Why should you uh, bring them back? I've thought about it, but you know, then I was just talking to Justin, you know, I don't know how to edit. I don't have a camera. I have to pay my friend to do it. We have to organize. It's just, it's a lot to do. And I was doing, are um, they funny? I used to make these advice videos that I really enjoyed making. I thought were funny, just sort of making fun of all the self-help videos on YouTube from totally unqualified people, just giving like the easiest advice, you know, like drink a lot of water guys. Like, you know, like, uh, ask people questions just yeah. like guys in their room, like think they're the 
sure. You know, have Gary V. Answer. Sure. <laughs> Gary V. I think that's the same. I was thinking of more of a specific guy, but I won't name him. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so I made a lot of those, but that was still the Facebook days. I was still just putting them on Facebook in like 2017. Or what whatever. about stand up though? What were you doing for that? Are um, you talking about that? I'm talking about when you came here. I'm sorry. 2015, oh, you come to Chicago. Yeah. I just started going to Mike's as much as I could. Okay. Every night. Um, just, did you see the laugh factory open Mike? Yeah. Is I, that where I might've met you? Cause I hosted uh, that from, for two you years. You know, that does ring a bell. I did it, and that was an exciting thing because I did really well. And then Curtis, after it was like, "Hey, I want to come talk to you." This was so long ago, you know. But uh, so he said, "I remember he was like, you 'You're going to audition in front of Jamie Masada.'" And I was okay, like, yeah. "Jamie Masada!" And then yeah, yeah. it's just it was some show. I did well, and yeah, and, and uh, never met Jamie Masada, but I ended up getting like semi regular bookings on Laugh Factory Good. that sort of whittled down maybe throughout the years, but. I still get there every now and then. You were there tonight. Yeah, I was there tonight. Headlining. Yeah, headlining a show. How did it go? Um, it went well. The show went really well. Uh, I, it, my set has me anxious now. You know, it wasn't sure. quite up to m- what I expect from my reactions, and and I try not to blame the crowd because I, you know, it's, it's. I think it's usually the comedians' fault if they can't find a way to make them laugh as much as they want, but. As we talked about, I heard maybe with that show, it's they have a lot of comedians up front, and then you're the last, and you're doing like three times longer of a set than anyone did before, and so some of my stuff just wasn't hitting quite the way I wanted, but it wasn't like a bomb. But closing the show at the Laugh Factory is always really hard for twofold, especially if it's you're doing more than twenty. Did you do twenty? Twenty. So check drop. Yeah. You're getting the check drop. Yeah. And you're also, especially if the show's already longer than an hour, by the time you get on, on a weeknight, people have been up. Yeah, I saw the, the, the show was great. The producers do a great job. I saw it's the, great show. L- the lineup and I was like, oh my God, that's like eight comedians before me. Yeah. Um, but and some he, of them are good. Some of them are newer. So it's going to be, it's like a, it's like a seesaw of up and down. Sure. Um, Most people did really well. The guy the host before is always me, usually really good. Yeah. Lily Le- Mason was, she she's was a great amazing. host and the guy before me killed, maybe buried me a little, but, um, I did well enough. You know, I got, you're in just, your own I head. Beat, I'm in my own head. So bad. People were like good set. And I was like, well, it really wasn't. And you know, <laughs> it's disgusting, man. I just got to chill. Um, and you were late for this podcast because you wanted to stay after the show and shake hands with all the people after the yeah, show. Yeah, my friends who came. Which yeah. is weird. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, listening audience, this is a late night themed podcast. So you thought and at nine twenty PM, <laughs> Paul's like, Where the where the fuck are you, dude? <laughs> and I'm like, the, the later I come, the more in theme it's, we it's are. It's a late night, not be late for the show. It's not called uh, why are you one in the same on time. night owls or night owls here. <laughs> Come on, we should be doing this past midnight. But. Well, that's what we're going to do. But you're like, it's too late for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that Danny Callis taught me a long time ago is when you think you didn't do well, w- more as well as you normally do, they don't know. The people that were at that show, the, the way he does it, they don't know. I can't do his voice. But it's true. They don't know. Like, sure. they don't know what your crushing is. You getting them to laugh is all that matters. And sometimes it is them. Sometimes it is the crowd. Sometimes they're getting a check and they're doing math while you're yeah. in the middle of a bit about boobs or ass. And I, I definitely, like, I don't want to make myself... I definitely think my style is so different than the average comedian where if you have a laugh factory show with a lot of comedians and then me, it's just so vastly different yeah. than the rest that it's maybe a little jarring or the audience doesn't quite know what to do with me. So many people after my sets think I'm autistic. So, autistic. <laughs> yes, it, it, but I'm, you know, maybe You're I'm not? close. My mom was old when she had me and one of my, <laughs> my oldest friend is quite autistic. So may, sometimes I'm like, maybe I'm like almost, but, um, have you been tested? No, I, no, I'm, I think I'm like a pretty, uh, non autistic per- love my love autism in general, but I don't think I am. Uh, I think you're a little, you think I'm a little, so I, I guess it is a spectrum. Have you had, yeah, it's a Isn't spectrum. Isn't it funny when people are like, is he on the spectrum? And it's like, if it's a spectrum, aren't we all on it? <laughs> well, we're it's all not- on it. But if you register above zero, I think is where it starts. So some people are just so you're not zeros. On the spectrum. Yeah. I mean, we're all on it. Some more than you think you're a zero. Some more than others. 
I'm just kidding. I'm not on it. Oh, sure. I have I have attention. No, I'm not on it. <laughs> I have attention not issues, me. but ADD or ADHD. Okay. But don't we all these days? Yeah, it's the phones. It is the phones. Mm-hmm. It all started with the phones. Yeah. Um, you do have a different style, and I think, and I and I've struggled with this too, where I've talked to some comedians. Um, you have a style that, and I, and I think there's two types of comics and I think, uh, a comedian sat me down 12 years ago. I opened for him. He's a huge comic now. And he said, there's two types of comics. You're either going to be a crowd, a comic that everyone in the crowd kind of likes a lot. Like you're just palatable to everything, or you're a comedian that in a crowd of 110 people fucking love and they become super fans of yours. And then they're your fans. And 90 people hate you. 90 people are just like, I didn't get it. Or 90 people. Whatever. <sighs> he goes, but he said this long time ago and it's true still to this day. that comic that the 10 people of the super fans that developed are the ones that are always the most successful. Okay. Interesting. I don't like the idea of 10% of the people liking me and 90%. I didn't say <laughs> like you. I didn't say 90, not liking you. 90 of you are like, sure. okay, that's fine. They liked the palatable, the fucking, I'm the vanilla comic that goes up and I can do above that. I can get sixes across. If there's a judge, I'm like, I, I can get the Russian judge to give me a six every fucking time. Whether I don't have like yeah. a lot of eights, I don't have a lot of fours, but I'm a steady six. Can't go broke making a profit. You know? Can't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the one that people are like, Hey, we're doing a bowling tournament fundraiser. Would you like to host it? You seem like a nice guy. We'll, our budget's only a thousand dollars. That's fundraisers. <laughs> that's me. I'll get that show. They're not going to ask you to do that. No, no. But you know what? 10 of those people in the crowd tonight are now on all their Instagrams right now, following you on everything. And they're telling them, their friends i just saw this fucking guy talk about no, chickens yeah, sure. and dead children or yeah. whatever the fuck you talked about yeah no i mean that's, yeah I, that has validity for sure i'm uh, it's like i'm always trying to toe the line though like i want to be accessible to everyone and i think i've done a pretty Why? good job uh, because i I, th- I don't want to like cater my act towards a select group of people i want to do what I mean, when I'm writing jokes, I'm not thinking of the audience I'm writing for. I'm just writing what I think is funny. And I'm just hoping that as many people as possible agree that it is funny. And I do think I've managed to turn a pretty alternative act into something pretty accessible. Um, Oh, it's definitely accessible. I mean, funny is funny. And you have bits. I mean, you crush at clubs and I'm sure you crush in alternative rooms. That's not yeah, the point. No, I, yeah, I'm, yeah, I think I can, I, I can do both worlds for sure. I've never seen you do an alternative room, but I've seen you do. What is, clubs. what would an alternative room? Know, I'm not be. invited to those shows, <laughs> <laughs> but you're like ulti. You have that ulti vibe yeah. sometimes, but I don't, I don't know where you, I don't know where you do shows. I only do shows when I see you <laughs> yeah. on the shows I'm at, but like, are you doing shows at the lodge or stuff? I guess they have yeah, alternative every, Yeah, rooms. every now and then. Um, what are alternative rooms now? I don't even know. I, I, there's a lot of those sort of gimmicky shows where it's like you trade sets or I don't really, I uh, mean, I would do those, but, uh, like I said earlier, I don't think I'm super social in the scene and not huge on social media and it affects your bookings. So you don't think you think so? Yeah. I think yeah. social media for sure. But being social, I guess does too, but you can get spots just by showing Hanging up out. a lot. Yeah. And I just, I don't really have like the bandwidth or the energy. Cause you're on the spectrum. Yeah, I'm too autistic. <laughs> yeah, I need my trains and my... <laughs> Do you have trains? No, no, I'm not autistic, Paul. <laughs> Are you... Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> I just don't... I don't... Hmm. I, I guess for me, I understand the, the wanting to be liked by the, most of the crowd, but like, I am envious of those comedians like you who have these killer bits where you get these super these people are like after the show you know the and there are sometimes i do have that i have some jokes now they're a little more edgy yeah i think than i used to be i'm writing more edgy stuff but like you always did that oh well thanks paul yeah i mean i try to i know i have like a handful of bits that pretty much will always get a a a good to great reaction so i sort of hang my hat on those and try to build around it and try new stuff or more questionable stuff like after those or, you know, I try to use those to buoy up my other jokes. But I, I think I'm like, I'm somewhat knock on wood. I'm somewhat like bomb proof because I know I have a handful of jokes that God forbid, you know, maybe they won't, but usually just 
hit. So. Hi, but you, I've seen you get out of holes too, where you know that the crowd's not getting your darker, or weirder stuff. Yeah. You have your more vanilla shit. Yeah, I definitely do. Yeah, pretty easy jokes to follow and understand. What's your? When are you writing your shit? When do you write? During the day, at night. Definitely more so during the day. I think ideas can come whenever, but I, I'm probably usually writing those out more in the day. But I mean, if the inspiration strikes and it's 1030, I'll, you know, jot something down. What's your typical, what's your writing process? You write just down or try it out on stage or both? I always write it first. Um, I'm getting a little looser with it where, uh, maybe on stage I'll figure out my wording, um, as opposed to figuring it all out before, but I go in with something written. I, I don't like to go off the cuff very much, but um, uh, but a lot of my jokes, I've had great lines come that were off the cuff because if you do it enough, you can get sort of a muscle memory, get sort of in a flow with it, and maybe just an idea comes to you in the middle of it. So I've had some really good lines come from going off the cuff, but I go in with a, a You have bits that are based on reaction from the crowd too, like your... Yeah. So those are the ones that are kind of like off the cuff too, but then I'm sure something works once you're like, okay, now I'm going to do that every fucking time. Someone says boobs or butt or whatever. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, I, yeah. Like I have a bit, a crowd work bit where I ask if anyone's, if anyone in the crowd rides motorcycles and, um, I, I had ideas of where I would go with it originally. I, I thought it was sort of funny that motorcyclists always seem to be in packs and I was like, I'll go with that angle. Like they seem so tough yet. They're, they like need all their friends around them. But then I just asked someone like what they, what they rode in a show and he answered. And the first thought that came into my head was call him a pussy. And I did. And now that's just the bit. If anybody I'm giving away my secrets, but if anyone rides a motorcycle, I ask them what they ride. They tell me. And then I give no it a bit what of a it beat is, and then I just call him a pussy. Yeah. yeah. Which is fun. I, it's really bit. fun. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. And I have an option B if no one rides motorcycles. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Don't give that away. Um, so are you recording all your sets at the shows um, and listening to them? Or in my earlier days, everything I was recording on audio, at least, and yeah. listening back. Now I'm not as much. Um, I don't like watching myself as much anymore, to well, be honest. Uh, yeah. It's uh, hard. Um, yeah, like, well, like tonight, you know, if I want the clip, I'll have to pay. I don't, I won't you want don't that have to clip. pay anymore. Oh, you don't? No. Can I get my money back from before when I had to pay? <laughs> um, that's great to hear. But yeah, tonight I won't use it and I didn't record on my own. But what I do is I, I just think about it. I go through my yeah. jokes. How did this one do? How did that one do? And I usually have a pretty good memory for it. What are you it. doing after shows, after your shows? Are you, are you, if you're not writing and you're not listening to your sets, you're still, <laughs> makes me sound pretty well, I'm just saying what they're, you're, you're not going to bed. It no. takes a while for you to come down. I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah, go home and chill. Really, um, call and your think grips. About it. Your, grips, your <laughs> grip gang. Ask GGs. What's up, G's? For me. Um, no, but yeah, go home. Think about it too much. Think about it a lot, <laughs> like I'm doing still right now. Uh, are you thinking about the bits that in your head right now? Or are you thinking about like, oh, I didn't like that set. I'm both i'm thinking about the bits i'm thinking about i'm upset with it and i'm thinking about myself as a comic like do it <laughs> do i evaluate I, yeah everything. every time it, something's not up to your standards that, that's what that's what i do and then even when i do really well and i know i did well i, I still find the one joke or whatever that didn't do or as the well. one per, are you the and, and we're all the same way but at a show everything's going well you're focused on the one person who's not having fun sure yeah or on the one joke that doesn't get quite the reaction i wanted or yeah I'm, I'm i beat myself up for sure have you ever like after a show where you've murdered or what do you do to celebrate have you done something like you're like all right i'm gonna go and what's like the um, best case scenario that you've done that you're allowed to say on national television it's sort of like hard work is its own reward or like it like just my mental state after knowing i killed is sort of the celebration i need like all you know when i go home and chill that means so much more i i don't i'm not gonna go out and party or anything right after. I'm, I'm as of now i'm not drinking alcohol take i'm abstaining for the moment um but you know even when i was i would just have like a beer after or whatever it's more so just the relief 
that I need. I, I don't need to celebrate. It's just then everything I do after, like if I go home and smoke a little weed or eat food, shower, all that just, it feels all that all just feels way better. It's relief. You use the word relief instead of like <laughs> yeah. ha- a vindication or happiness. Oh yeah. Happy. There's, there's happiness. There's elation. But are you yeah. doing, are you, are you anxious going on stage? I think it depends. I mean, probably every show. Yes. To some extent, but definitely like depend depends on the show more so. Cause usually when you say the word relief, it's like, it's in, insinuating they're like, oh, thank God that went well. Like, yeah, yeah. it's not like, a good, it's I kind expect, of a negative. I expect to do well. Like I've done it enough okay. and done well enough where like I, I don't go in thinking you're going to suck. And then afterwards, it's just, it's just anxiety. It's just, uh, you're putting yourself out there every time you do stand up. Sure. You're telling a group of people like, I think this is funny when I do it this way. And so it's just, it's really vulnerable. And so I don't I see, I, this is where I think it's a little different with you and I, I, you talk about vulnerability, your persona on stage is separate than you. Yeah. yeah. Very separate. Okay. Yeah. And that's, if they don't like that persona, it doesn't, it shouldn't affect you as much because it's not you. <laughs> Whereas if, the, if I'm talking about my personal, I'm talking about me, my family, like my place in life being a failed, you know, lawyer or whatever if i'm telling those jokes they don't don't like me it's different you have that that. extra layer of um separating the crowd not liking your jokes but then maybe i'm worried like that they'll (laughs) think wow this guy's trying really hard and it's still not working you know (laughs) like just chill man and i have had people sincerely tell me like i think you should act more like yourself or like good friends tell me that other other comics tell me and I, I, I can't, I can't act. How did you get this persona? I don't know. I I mean, I've always liked to perform. I did sketch for years, you know, in theater, like I liked, but it wasn't the same character. No, but I, I had a, I definitely felt more comfortable playing a character or adopting a persona than just being max on a stage. So even sketch, I had different characters. I suppose I did. George Gershwin was George Gershwin. Um, the frog footman and Alice in Wonderland, but no, but, um, <laughs> it was just, I, I was like, okay, I want to do stand up. Okay. got to sit down and write jokes. What's funny to me. Eventually the jokes come out and then it's like, Oh, how do I deliver it? Just whatever feels natural to me, which funny enough, isn't a, me being natural at all. It's just, my jokes <laughs> are pretty straightforward. I feel like and blunt. And so I feel like my persona fits that. Have you ever tried to do your jokes in your regular no, voice? No, not one time. I don't, I, I don't, I don't think it would work. Do you have I don't jokes want to, I, I like, well, I, know. I like a, entering a different universe. It gets, I, I, I think it can it's your theater captivate your the theater audience kid too. at heart. I can, man, this does come back to me being in high school theater. Yeah, no, I just think it ca- can captivate the audience and make me stand out, be unique. Be, I used to be super loud. I don't know if you remember this from early. I do on. remember I used you to, like, yelling. not use the microphone. And then I slowly grew up because I have a loud voice and, I could fill up a room with it and I had a joke about it and it just sort of fit. I felt, but then I slowly started chilling out and using feeling like I should let my jokes speak for themselves more than my loud voice. Well, they're not speaking for themselves cause you're speaking for them in a different way. Yes, word. but I had, I, I think I'm a good writer. <laughs> so I just, I didn't want to be like, I'm a good writer and I'm yelling these jokes. I, I just wanted to let them. Have you ever, work. have you written jokes where they're personal? Like they won't work in the persona you have on stage where you're like, I wish I could talk about my, you know, wife and I meeting and being best friends in middle school or whatever. And I never have had that urge to write about my personal life. But you have this shit happening to you all the time in your daily life. You can't. I mean, I'm sure it doesn't translate in that voice. Sometimes there's got to be situations where you're like, you know, talking about your George Gershwin thing. Like, that's a funny thing to me. If you tell it's like, as you're just talking, I just, I feel like it doesn't fit with what I do. I feel like if I, if I, maybe you just do a separate K 
character. Maybe I need to go to Second. some open mic somewhere and just try being myself. But I've never been as interested in like the storytelling comedy, you know, like this crazy thing happened to me, guys. Like, oh, you I don't get, like that? Get the fuck <laughs> out. <laughs> Paul, I mean, you're, you do it best. <laughs> but no, I, I get a little annoyed sometimes when I feel like I don't not not to throw shade on comedy or comedians, but a lot of people sort of just like, hey, this funny thing happened to me, guys. And they tell the story. And to me, that's just not super interesting. Of course, sometimes it can be really funny. If you don't have a punchline. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's just sometimes it feels like this is just something I want you to tell me like at a dinner party or like us talking. <laughs> I don't really want it on stage, but a lot of people love it. So who were your favorite comedians growing up? Like, were you a Mitch Hedberg guy? I mean, I wasn't like a huge straight stand up fan growing up I, I watched a ton of uh larry david like seinfeld curb your enthusiasm i was watching that from a young age you know all those sort of class like south park simpsons all that i was reading a lot of uh the far side oh you yeah know, comics i remember that. that i love the far side yeah i think that i i would i would count them as an influence the far yeah. side but um and then when I started watching more stand up uh when i watched mitch hedberg the first time in college he did make me realize Oh, co like stand up comedy can be like that. It can be yeah. just one liner disconnected jokes. So, and that's sort of what I do. So, he I, he's an influence for sure because he was 100%. killing me the first time I watched him. Like, just his joke about like, I like to eat rice when I'm hungry because like you can eat a thousand of something. Yeah. Just like that's simple stuff bet. like that. And you know, he's not acting like himself, right? He's, no. He's, a fa he's doing some sort of affectation. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to defend it. You're like, you're like, he's doing it. He's a pro. I'm just, I'm just curious because, you know, I have a lot of friends who are like that. And I feel like I'm envious in a way because you have this separate shield of protection and it's also, but it's also a gift because you have this acting ability. You can act as a person and you could step away from it, you know? Yeah. I, I have tried to let people in to like let them know a little more about me on stage though, but like simple stuff like saying I'm from Indiana and then I have a joke about that. Um, so maybe I feel like that's my only example. Like this is the only, have you, you know, I'll say like I'm married, but then my joke will be, well, you got a ring on too. Yeah. My it. joke will be a, a total lie about my wife getting breast reduction surgery, which got didn't it. happen. Sure. I wish. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, uh, no, um, <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's difficult for me to like let people in and I, and I don't quite have the interest. I want to keep writing jokes just about things that appear random. Maybe I, I sort of like it. And when my set list, I can bounce from a joke about like, you know, drug sniffing dogs to a joke about Pinocchio to a joke about, um, uh, uh, movie credits. Like I, I, I pride myself on having a wide range of things you wouldn't necessarily think and, and then when it crushes, you just have relief and honestly, you go in a corner man. in your house and you're just like sitting in a corner watching a movie about trains and then going and playing <sighs> with your trains. No <laughs> trains. No, I'll go home and watch a movie for sure and just chill. But uh, I think relief is a pretty good word. Of course, you know, like happiness is there. Yeah. Sheer happiness is there. But uh, it's more of like maybe a fear of failure than it is a celebrating success or something. <laughs> Are you know. an only child? <laughs> yeah, I grew up an only child. I have two half brothers who are way older. Yeah. They didn't the live child. in the same home with me. So I grew up, I would see them once, twice a year, but uh, I was an only this child. This all makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Good. Nice pickup there, Paul. That's a good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've, I've been doing this gift. a long time. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do with my boring stories. <laughs> Some stuff, that's what I get. But I feel like you do have this this great story of being from, I mean like the fact that you went to Bloomington, you grew up there and you, and the thing that you said, you're like, yeah, I'd go home and stay up till five. I mean, that's a funny fucking concept to me that like you'd go to bed at 12 when you were at school, but then when you went home, which is 10 miles, 10 minutes away, yeah, you'd stay up till five 30 at your yeah, own. It's just a phase. I think a yeah. lot of college kids during winter break go through that phase. Sure. My friends I did, did too. I agree too. My friend who had siblings was like, I'm going to bed. At, they were younger <laughs> siblings. He's like, I'm going to bed as they're getting up to get ready yeah. for high school. Like, so I thought you said, I thought, <laughs> I thought you threw in the fact that they have siblings. Like I don't just hang out. <laughs> 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 only other only children i got it no i see where you're going um did did you ever have a situation where you were up late 
and you're like, oh, I wish I was in bed. Like you're like, why yeah, when I, I got arrested for public intoxication, New Year's Day, New Year's Day night, um, when was that this? same winter break, Bloomington. This is kids. It's dangerous to really change your sleep schedule because <laughs> it was New Year's, and I just drank way too much with friends. And um, this is in high school or college? College. college. I didn't start drinking until uh, college. Well, yeah, pretty much until it was legal. <laughs> Nerd. Um, and I, I got way too drunk, and my whole crew, my whole group of friends did. So we got taken home responsibly, like 1 a.m. And then my friend calls me while I'm still up, you know, wasted, and he's like, "Dude, come back to the party." So I was like, yeah, sure. So I start walking, probably a three mile walk, dead of the night, one thirty by this point, probably. And it, it, that walk resulted in a public intoxication arrest. So that's when I definitely regretted me. You were out. just walking and they arrested you. It's, and- it's quite embarrassing, Paul. But uh, uh, I, I, uh, I stopped to relieve myself. Oh. Um, the cop saw me doing so bad timing and one thing led to another i just picture were you like walking in a street where there's cornfields like i don't understand no bloomington's not like that okay bloomington bloomington that you know we well, said stu- three miles i figured bloomington the whole city is <laughs> two miles and then once you go three miles you're into the fields no bloomington's more than that okay you know there's Six more miles. than corn in indiana okay indiana beach slogan but um <laughs> uh yeah so that was definitely a time I wished I was in bed because that was so. What happened? You got arrested. You got- I got arrested for public intoxication. Um, Did you have to go to jail? I the jail. I was in the drunk tank. Okay, for quite a while. What's quite a while? Four hours. Uh at least I think. Yeah, and um, how'd you get out? <laughs> I called a friend to come bail me out. Oh no! <laughs> I was not about to call my parents. Um, to come do that. But you were dropped off at your parents' house. My friend came and picked me up and dropped me off at my parents' house. And they just didn't notice that you were gone? No, they they noticed that something was... I hadn't called or whatever, you know. And uh, Well, I wasn't there when they woke up. That was the thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they had heard me come home because I was that drunk. And so... <laughs> and, <laughs> then you went yeah. back out. And I like, you got ripped abducted? pants and everything. Oh, no. From, uh, so how did, wait, how did you have ripped pants? Oh, I, I left out the part that I ran from the, <laughs> from the officer. You ran? I was that drunk, Paul. I saw cops and I was like, I gotta run. <laughs> and it was, I was, I, I was just, and yeah. You weren't fast because you were a theater kid. I was, no, I'm, I'm blinding speed, but, uh, <laughs> I took a bad angle. No, no, I, uh, well, they ganged up on me. Like right when I started they tackled running, you? right when I started running, another car cop car appeared. I don't know. Like it's like they have radios or whatever. Um, <laughs> but uh, and so I try, I remember going this direction, then doubling back. And then I think I fucking tripped, and then they got me. All for <sighs> public intoxication in Bloomington. This, those are the days when crime was easy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, thankfully I got pretrial diversion. Being a white fellow helped. Probably. That helps. And uh, so it's not on my record, thank God. But uh, now it's on the public record. Well, so. No one's going to judge you. Here. <laughs> They're going to judge you for way worse. <laughs> the way worse things that have happened in your life. So are you still up late now? You're married now. so you- Yeah. Well, doing this podcast, I was thinking, I was like, Max, like, what are your sleep patterns? Yeah. The last year, like eight months of that year, I had an eight to five job. Um, and that was a, an exhausting job teaching preschool. So it was just sucking the energy out of me, sucking the life out of me. And I was going to bed like between nine to 10 every night. Sometimes was exhausted. I was so tired. I was probably a little sad because I hated the job too. And so I just, I didn't have any energy. Like I'd come home, chill a bit, eat. And then I'd be like, well, got to be up real early and be there for nine hours doing this really hard work. So I think I'm going to go to bed. So then I was going to bed, you know, yeah, nine to 10, but now Um, I'm not doing that job. I'm doing gig work. And so that usually doesn't start super early. So now I've really shifted. So a few nights ago, I did that Zany's after hours show. Oh yeah. I, you know, I didn't go to bed till like two 30 that night. And so I have a wide range. I'm not very rigid. It just depends on what's going on in my life. Pretty much like this stretch of time. I've been going to bed like midnight to one most nights, which 
for for true night owls probably is mm. child's play but child's play compared my wife's really uh set she has a regular nine to five so she's always in bed pretty much at the same time so you said i'm not that, like that though you said you hated the preschool job because yeah. it was really hard yeah what was hard about teaching do you just not like kids? No, I like kids. I mean, in June, I'm, I'm going to, in June, I'm going to start as a public school teacher with teach for America. Oh, wow. um, I got accepted. Do you have to travel places? No, I'll, I'll, I'll be in Chicago. Okay. Um, I got accepted cause that job, I've always been good with kids and had various jobs working with kids. Um, just cause they're pretty easy, to, pretty easy to find and yeah. get, you know? Um, but this job, you know, the kids are going to be kids. The kids weren't the issue the as much as, job. yeah, it was just the, the corporation guidepost Montessori. Terrible. Do not send your kids to a guidepost Montessori. What's a, what does that mean? Guidepost is the company and, and a Montessori oh. is the type of education they do. Montessori education. Montessori. I know what that yeah. is. But what, 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 uh, what made it so difficult? Um, it's a huge corporations. They have like 160, 170 schools nationwide. But you were just so working at one school. I was right? working at the one in West loop okay uh, washington and morgan okay don't give up uh, <laughs> just uh, <laughs> just tell us the basics what um, was the be, what was so hard well i mean the pay was terrible sure um the hours were that's a long time every day to be with preschool age kids eight to five no time off no summers off the you get six total days for holidays a year okay so compare that to a public so the school it's not corporate gig was horrible but yeah. what about was there any happiness in the day of working with kids since you yeah the kids, kids would always they're so authentic that they're always going to spark some sort of joy in you whenever they do some you know totally authentic bizarre whatever thing of course they can drive you crazy but i never held it against them really i because they're the three and four years old um but yeah it's just it, the day-to-day -day work was terrible because it just the employees weren't valued the pay was terrible bad management it felt like they cared more about profit than the kids so i mean i got out for profit business yeah so i got out in public school pays way better than that way more time off better hours so I'm looking, I'm a little nervous, but I'm looking forward to it. You're going to have feel relief when you're done every day. <laughs> probably, Come yeah, home probably. Like, I can't wait. Don't to we all feel my... like that after work? Just thank God it's over. I think that I left the corporate world, so I didn't have to feel that relief. I feel <laughs> like I just want to have joy after I like celebrate. I don't drink after my shows, but I go out and like, I'm like, all right, I'm going to like chill out. I'm going to get a nice meal. I deserved it. I crushed. If I have Even a good if you show. end at like 930, you're going out to get a meal. Oh, I don't eat dinner until after my, I can't eat before a show. I eat, I eat my yeah, first Yeah, I don't meal. really eat before one, but yeah. I, I guess I'll eat when I get home. Yeah. Yeah. I just eat. Yeah. I always eat after. Where do you go? You go like late night places. Well, Mexican. Um, no, not always. No. But yeah, the one here is my favorite. But I, I uh, on the road, it sucks because there's not a lot of things open in towns like Bloomington after 10. Like, yeah. yeah I was in uh, Wisconsin and I just asked the crowd. I, when I was in Iowa recently. I'm like. When I said it was when I was like, well, hey, where can I get food after they all like laughed at me? And so I said that recently when I was in Wisconsin, I'm like, I'm sure there's nothing open now. But if there was and they're like, oh, you got to go to Bob's or whatever. I was like, where is that? Like 30 miles north. I'm like, I'm not going out of my way to go. So I just got McDonald's. Yep. That's what, that's what you got to do. <laughs> yeah. And it's not healthy. No. These are the decisions late at night that I make. But it's a bad decision, but it's also better than running away from cops oh. drunk. So yeah, it's all yeah. relative. Better than a drunk uh, freshman in college would make <laughs> definitely a good decision. Max, we uh, are out of time. We went over time. I'm oh. sorry for keeping you so late. But then again, you were late, so I don't feel yeah, that bad. It's my fault. It is your fault. Yeah. It's not your fault, but it is your fault. Yeah, I take uh, okay. Max, where can people find out more about you and your upcoming shows and this character that you play on stage? Well, everyone's saying to get a TikTok, and I haven't, so not on TikTok. You should definitely be on TikTok. Your uh, those sketches oh, and shit. We didn't even get into my issues with social media. I know it comedy. sucks, but you got to do uh, it. Like, got it. You know it. what? Here's what's funny. Someone made a point about Adam Burke made a point about this recently. It's like the same those people like us who are complaining about social media are the same. I know. Like ten years ago, they're like, ah, oh, late night says bullshit. Like you're either you gotta 
You yeah, gotta, you got to play the game you if, if you the want game. the rewards of the game. You know, if you just want to do stand up and th- and whatever. But you can't. You yeah. can't even do stand up. Yeah, you like can't really anymore. get booked as a headliner, which is what I want if if you don't have a, you know, certain number of followers, which makes sense. You got the clubs have to make money, but it feels like now Instagram is just like the only means of building a following. I'll and tell you what I feel following. after we get off here cuz sure. this is going on Instagram, so, which I love. Yeah, good, um, good site. But no, um yeah, you should totally be on tiktok all right well i'll get on tiktok soon on instagram it's at max walter max little first name last name first name action max thanks for doing the podcast hey, thanks, I really Paul. Appreciate thank it. you very much thank you all for listening to another edition of why are you awake uh max can you take us out in mandarin uh, well i can do a little rap in mandarin if you want That's we'll my... do a rap but then end it with the mandarin way of saying why are you awake? Yeah, I wrote this for, for one of my projects for a Chinese class. It's not six minutes long, is it? No, no, at 12. That's your hall. What the means of show? Wang my way. Shan's a name in the doll. Wool shashe. Wool the shanti. And the boo shahe. Fanjong. Wool the in your way around name and fey. Lasha lasha gosa wool. Need a jung one hunting how. Lasha dow yes shi. Wool ju dow. Wool sway shot on how. Shane waiting shway wing on gal. Wool just hung on lasha men hun jow out. Sai chin to fang me in. Wool yo tai dual. Sancha e sway. Wool ka e tway show. Wool gun pele if you knew. Zong lay buffon show. Wool mayo win. And that was all about why he believed the Holocaust wasn't real. That's Mm, weird. Look it up, folks. (laughs) Look it up. Google why wasn't it real. You'll find answers. How do you say why are you awake? Go to sleep. Go to sleep.